it's a really good looking car that 90s Japanese styling that I fell in love with quite often I've got a little bench out the front of my house I will just sit there and stare at the car and, and it sounds stupid recently the prices of R34 specifically have gone up absolutely massively because of the popularity of them and I think certainly the, the use of them more in YouTubers and, and social media. And you actually see quite a lot on social media, so it makes you think there's a lot about. When you look at actual production for these cars, over the four years that they made them, from every model from the base four-door non-turbo to the GTR, they made 65,000 over those four years. You know, to put it in perspective, Toyota make 500,000 Camrys a year. When you think about how many of those cars have been written off, stolen, rusted away, and when they're at their lowest value, not cared for, there's not a lot of them left. My name's Rob Maskell, and I drive a 1999 Nissan Skyline R34 GT25. So I got into cars at quite a young age, inspired by my granddad. He always used to drive old Renault 5s. And when he was done with them and they wouldn't pass an MOT anymore, they used to stick them in my parents' field and I used to go play on them. So I was like 10, 11, 12, and you'd sit in the driver's seat and you know, pretend to be driving, and then you'd take a bit off and put a bit back on and just go from there. So when I started driving, all I wanted was a Renault 5. So I got a base model Renault 5, put all the body kit on from a turbo and drove that around multicolored for ages. Um, a few years down the line and I just needed a car at the time and one came up super cheap and it was a Honda Civic VTI and got into Japanese cars from there really. From that I sort of found out about Driftworks, I ended up buying a, an S13 and used that as a drift car and from then on it's been powerful rear wheel drive Japanese cars ever since. I picked this one up as a completely standard, I mean absolutely standard car the day it had been registered, so it had been ported from Japan maybe a week before and drove it back completely stock and um, yeah fell in love with it from there even as an auto non-turbo it was just a great car. <laughs> So the initial idea with buying this R34 was to actually use it as a drift car, so that all the modifications I did initially were towards that. And then really over the next year, year and a half, um, I did a few drift days in it, but the prices of them just rocketed it up. Um, so that sort of changed the direction of the car a little bit, and now it uses more as a, as a daily driver and a show car. For the styling on this R34, I wanted to keep it not too leery, and I definitely didn't want to make it look like a GTR. So I stuck with 17 inch wheels instead of 18s or 19s, what most people go for. And all the body kit is OE Nissan stuff. And because of that, it all fits perfectly and works with each other in the flow of the car. Probably the first thing people notice of my R34 is the livery. This is based off of the Advan race cars. I went for it because the car was completely solid black before and it just didn't stand out. You couldn't see any of the features of the lines of the car. Uh, the modifications on it. On interior, I've got Recaro bucket seats out of a DC5 Integra. It's also got a personal Grinta steering wheel, which is my favorite steering wheel. I use it on most of my cars. We've got a half cage for a bit of protection and a bit more stability because it is the base model. It doesn't have as much structural support as some of the other ones do. The car is also sat on um, tough luck bags, airbags with three airlift suspension so it is all completely height adjustable but that sat onto a HSD coilover so you can still adjust the bounce and the rebound as well as the ride height on there so that makes it really good for road driving and road handling but also being able to deal with the Devon roads and all the potholes that we have and speed bumps. As a kid you have a picture of this car on your wall and you always aspire to, to be able to get one. And I, you know, at the time didn't think that would be a possibility. It gets so much attention. So I have and run a YouTube channel, which is called Build It TV, uh, and that is fully based on myself and following people who build their cars. I do all the work on my car myself as well. All of that has been done from scratch in this unit because I'm a big believer of, of doing stuff yourself. I prefer to look at my car and know that I've done it rather than paid someone else. It gives me that pride when I look at it.